Hello there and thanks so much for joining me for another tutorial. I'm Erin Eno and today we're going to be painting this super simple watercolor floral topiary. Today I'm going to be using my uh, Viviva color pans. This is a new uh, paint to me and I'm looking forward to trying it out. So just at the start of the video I'm just going to quickly swatch them for you so you can see what all the colors look like. And if you're interested in these uh, color pans or any of the other Viviva products, please visit their website and don't forget to use my affiliate link, which will be in the description box, or use the discount code Aranino10 at checkout. Now let's jump in and get started. So some of you who uh, follow my channel regularly will know that I have partnered with Viviva Colors. I have done a couple of videos on their products, their Viviva uh, color sheets along with their Viviva travel kit. And today we're going to be looking at their watercolor pans. So this is a 16 color set. Unlike their color sheets, these are actually pigment based. So they do have a light fast rating. I don't know what the light fastness is as of yet and I'm not sure if it's posted on their website. I think they um, may have posted it on their website. I will make note of that in the description if they have. If not, um, it's my understanding that they're going to be posting it soon. So let's just jump in and take a look. So what's unique about these is that it comes in a little set like this, a little sleeve. Let me just pop these out. And what is very unique about this is that it comes in a cork palette um, and it is ridiculously light. So I'm not sure what um, these are equivalent to for volume, if it's like a half pan. Um, these colors are relatively thin pans, but they are a little uh, bigger. So they may be equivalent to a half pan, maybe a little smaller. I'm not really sure. Um, but for now, we're just going to swatch them and take a look at how lovely these colors are. So it does come with a swatch sheet and that's what I'm going to use to swatch because it's a perfect size and just keep it with the palette at all times. Also, this is a coated sheet, so you can actually take this to travel um, and, you know, use it for plein air if you want to, if you're just going to someone's house to visit because this is uh, coated and you can use it as a palette. So I'm just going to swatch for now. So the colors are, I just have to pick this up. So we've got um, Crimson Lake, Opera, Permanent Yellow, Cinnamon, Light Yellow Green, Permanent Green, Periwinkle, Turquoise Blue, Alizarian Crimson, Cocktail Pink, Bees Yellow, Indian Red, Olive Green, which is one of my favorite colors, uh, Viridian Hue, Cobalt Blue, and Marine Blue. So let's take a look and see what these are like. I always like to do a, um, a gradation when I swatch because I like to see them at full strength and uh, as well as like a light wash. And I'm going to go beyond the square here because I want to see the opacity of these as well. So I will fast forward this so we don't take a lot of time in the video on this portion, but I really want you to see what these look like as I'm painting them. As I was swatching on this supplied swatch sheet, I just kind of felt that um, the texture of the swatch sheet just wasn't doing justice to the paint. So I decided to switch over and swatch out um, larger swatches so I can get a better gradation on a watercolor sketch pad. This is just a non-cotton paper, but I just felt it was, um, to be fair to the paints, I really just wanted to see them on um, more of a, a textured cold press paper. So that's what you'll see me doing here. I will keep the actual um, supplied swatch sheet with the paint pan palette itself just for reference for color but I just thought to do this in the sketchbook really gives you a better idea of how these paints um, really really come across with their vibrancy and their washes.
Okay, so my first impressions just from swatching are that I really didn't need a full drop of water to activate these. They activated really, really quickly. In fact, I had to take some of the water off of them because they activated so quickly. Um, the colors are quite transparent, which I absolutely love. They're nice, they're bright, they're vibrant. So I'm actually really impressed on how quickly they activated. Um, the, the blending of them I'm quite pleased with. I'm really looking forward to trying these out in some future paintings. Um, and there are some really fun colors here that I don't have that I would be really happy to have in my arsenal. And this is one of them. This is the turquoise blue. And the periwinkle, I think, is a really fun color to have as well. I'm quite happy with the olive green and the cinnamon, which is kind of a, a blushy kind of color. Um, that's definitely one that would be hard to mix, so it's really nice to have in my palette. And the opera, which I would assume is a kind of equivalent to an opera rose, is so uh, bright and so vibrant, that's gonna be really fun to use. So I hope this gives you an idea on what these Viva Color pans are like and what you can achieve from them. So let's just jump in and start painting our floral topiary. Today I'm using a sheet of uh, Bao Hong Academy cold press watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton. For brushes, I have a Princeton Neptune in a size four round, and I have a Princeton Heritage in a size six round. You will also need a pencil because we're just gonna do a, just a really quick little sketch before we get into painting. So I'm gonna start by just doing a line down the center of my sheet, and this will just help us place our little topiary balls. And this will also be where we have our stem. And I'm just gonna do two kind of quick lines, roughly where I want that pot to be. Then above that, I want to do two tiers of a topiary ball. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a circle here. And it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? because we're doing um, greenery and flowers and they're not gonna be perfectly round. And then we're gonna do a smaller one just above that. Just like that. So for the pot, I'm just gonna keep it really simple. Just put a little lip on it, little rim. Just have it kind of Curve down, a little roundish, not too deep. Just like that, and then you would see maybe the other side of it. I'm trying to decide if maybe I want to put flowers in the pot too, but we'll see. I'll decide that once I get into it. This isn't quite as wide as I want it to be. I'm just going to widen this up just a little bit. I think because I'm looking at it at a weird angle. I'm not looking at it like directly above, so it's a little distorted from my view. And I think I will put flowers in this pot at the bottom, just to kind of add some continuity. Okay, so now I'm just going to lighten my lines with my kneaded eraser. Okay, so we have everything sketched out. Now we can start to paint. I'm just going to use my palette. I think it'll just be easier than using the little kind of piece of paper palette that's there. And I think I want to go pink flowers, then blue flowers, then pink flowers. I'm going to start with this cocktail pink. I'll just get some in my palette there. Okay, and I'm just tapping off the excess water onto my paper towel. And we're just gonna, I, go, I was gonna say type in. We're just gonna paint in some loose flowers. Some will be head on views, some can be side view towards the outer edges. Okay, because I hadn't really decided, you know, how big I wanted the, um, flowers to be as opposed to um, 
the leaves, but I think that I want the flowers to be fairly prominent. Okay, so you can see they're very loose. Okay, and like I said, some are full on, some are kind of side views towards the edges, just like that. So now that I have the pink out, we're just gonna go ahead and put in some pink flowers towards the bottom. Just assuming this would be kind of mossy and flowers as well. And I think I said I was gonna do blue flowers. I, I kind of think I'm changing my mind. I think I'm gonna use this uh, periwinkle color here just cause it's so pretty. So I'll get some of that in my palette. Okay, and we'll do the same thing. Actually, that's quite thick. I want it a little bit thinner than that. Tap the excess water off on my paper towel. I don't like the shape of that. Let me try that again. I want it to kind of somehow look like flowers. Okay, ignore that first one. That was really not well done at all. Okay, so the same thing. Some side views some head on. And you'll see that I'm not continuing, continuing? I'm not continuing to reload my brush because I want some of the flowers to be lighter than others. And if when you're done this, you decide that you have too many flowers and not enough leaves, we can always go on top of the flowers with the green because that should cover these light colors that we're using. But it's best to get more flowers in than not enough because we can always cover them up with leaves. Okay, and I think I'll put in just a few more pink ones at that bottom for that same reason that we can cover those up. Okay, sorry about that. I had a little camera connection issue. So now I'm gonna go into the green and I'm gonna start with the olive green. Actually, you know what? No, now I think what we're gonna do is go to uh, the planter. So the, for the planter, I'm gonna use the cobalt blue. And I'll mix some of that down here. And I want it kind of dulled down a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the Indian red to it because I don't want like a really bright, vivid blue. I want it to be kind of on the grayish side. That looks good. I'm just gonna water it down a titch and I'm just gonna go over this vase shape that we put down. So just paint it all in so we've got the little rim like so and I want this kind of rustic I think I'm actually just gonna pick some of this up even because I don't want it too dark so the darker areas can act as kind of the shadow okay So now we'll just go in and paint the rest of it. So I'm following that curved shape. Come down this side, follow that curve. And along the bottom. And then while it's wet, I'm gonna rinse my brush off and just kind of blend this out. I don't want the pot having too much um, prominence in this. I want the flowers to kind of 
you know, be the star of the show here. So I'm just wetting my brush, going in with more water and blending this out. Okay, so I will just add a little more shadow detail there. But that's about as complicated as I want that pot to be because I don't want it stealing attention from the other elements. So now we'll go and we'll start the green. So I'll go back to my olive green, which is quite yellow. Okay, and I'm just going to start just tapping in some green. We're going to go in with darker green, but I want to start off light. And we're just kind of filling in these areas. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need or want really a perfect ball. We want it to look, you know, still organic. And if you look at the pot, because I've got shading on the right side, we're going to imagine that the sun is coming from this side on the flowers as well. So we will get darker with the greenery towards the, the bottom right. Okay, so just tapping this all in. A little bit more of the olive green. And we'll do this guy here. And this is very loose, so you don't have to fuss too much. Just like that, and some down with these flowers down here. We could even do some little kind of sprays of greenery coming out of it, just for fun. Just add a little bit of interest. And while that's still wet, I'm going to add some of that permanent green. Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to stick with the olive green. but we're gonna make it a little more blue and I'm gonna add in some, just some of that cobalt blue just to make it a deeper green. Not that much, it's a little too much blue. There's a nice deep green. Okay, so now we're gonna just tap in some darker leaves Again, just being loose. No, I think that's gone a little dark, so I'm just going to tap some up with my paper towel, which actually gives it a nice effect. It kind of changes the intensity of the greens in a kind of a little uncontrolled way. Because this is so small and loose, you can't paint specific leaves. So it's nice if you just kind of go in and tap with that paper towel just to change the intensity but not in a real kind of strict way. Okay so I'm just tapping just like that and we'll do the same thing down here and do some little kind of sprays of that darker green. Just have some fun with this and just kind of experiment. We can even do some kind of hanging over the front of the planter. 
like so. And then while that's still fairly wet or slightly wet, I'm going to make an even darker green and I'm going to add some of that Indian red to it. Get some of the blue in there. Okay, so we've got another nice dark green. Just tap in a little bit more in some of these areas. And I'm going to do the same thing because I can't, like I say, go in and paint individual leaves. I want to make sure that there's, you know, depth and texture to them. So I'm going to do the same thing and tap this a bit with my paper towel. Same thing down here. Just a little tap. Maybe some more darker wisps of grass coming out of here. And one important thing we can't forget is we have to do the little trunk. So I'm going to use that Indian red. And I'm going to mix in just a little bit of that olive green. Okay, and I don't want the trunk taking over either, so I'm just going to make that not too deep of a color. Just like so. And if you want, you can just pick a little bit of it up off that side. That wasn't very good. Kind of took it all up. Just going to tap a little bit down this right hand side. And that made it a little fatter than I wanted, but that's okay. I'm going to add a little green to that just to deepen it up a bit. Just to get some shadow effect on the right side of that. So now what we want to do is just add a little bit of depth to the actual flowers. By putting some centers in them. So I'm going to take that pink, add a little bit of that green. Okay, so we've got this kind of natural, earthy kind of color and we're just going to tap in the center you don't have to do all the flowers because some of them will be side views of course and we'll do the same thing with the purple so I'm just going to add some of that Indian red to the purple. That was a lot of Indian red. I actually wanted a little darker. Maybe I'll add in a bit of a bit of that olive green and see what that does. That didn't make it very dark. Let's try the blue. I'm still getting used to these colors. They're just so different from what I'm used to. And we'll just tap in the center of the purple flowers. Just like that. I missed the little pink ones down here, didn't I? Don't want to forget about these guys down here. And then I think the top one is kind of lacking some green. It just seems to be a little a little light on the green in some of these areas towards the left. I do want the green to 
be rich in some areas. So I want to go in with a really deep green now. So I'm going to take that cobalt blue and I'm going to try to mix it with this light yellow green. See what kind of a green we get there. I think I wanted a little more blue. Maybe not that blue. Try adding some olive green now. So we've got a really deep green. And I just want to use this sparingly in some of this greenery. Maybe just towards the center just to give it a little more depth. So I'm just going to the right because I'm assuming the, sh the shading's coming from here, the light's coming from here, so it would be more shaded down towards the right and the bottom. Okay, we'll put some down here. Some of these grasses coming out again. Again, you can, you know, put in as much greenery as you want. If you want more greenery than flowers, that's perfectly good. Perfectly good. That's perfectly okay as well. Whatever your preference is. I really like the deep green against the pink. But I think I'm going to leave it at that. So I'm going to take it off the board so we can really see what it looks like without that distraction. And there you go. There is your simple little floral topiary. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful. And I really hope you'll give this a try with any colors that you choose. You can do a three tier topiary. I just wanted to keep it simple just to give you an idea. Um, but you can take it from there and have fun with it. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by and supporting my channel. Take care and I'll see you next time.